Marty, wake up. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for uh, being here. It uh, it was interesting on uh, Tuesday listening to Donald Trump. Um, I heard bits and pieces of this, not the whole interview, because well, we were doing our own show. But he was on Fox and Friends, which is you know sometimes where he likes to go to make news, and then that kind of spiders out over the other networks and the internet and et cetera. And then he tweets about follows up on that, rinse and repeat. That is the way the Donald. Uh, does the whole presidential news conferencing. doesn't have that kind of news conference, not in the traditional sense. He works it this way. And that's his organic method. He did this on the topic of variety of topics, but also on immigration. He said his his opponent, Ben Carson, and, and why is he talking about Ben Carson? Because new polling is out, shows Carson 29 percent, Trump 23 percent. So Ben Carson is uh, doing quite well. He says Ben Carson is weak on immigration. And that Marco Rubio, of course, senator from the state of Florida, is horrible on immigration. Those are quotes today from Donald Trump. But the immigration issue is going to be a factor out there. And it's interesting the way he frames that, you know, with Marco Rubio, because Rubio, you know, has dialed down some of his earlier campaign rhetoric as as uh, Donald Trump rose in the standings, so to speak, the polling on immigration um, as a major factor. There's no question that there was a a mood of the electorate out there, especially on the GOP side, um, that was definitely hinging on everything having to do with immigration. The question is, where will things go with this current Congress, with the new Speaker of the House? Paul Ryan says that he's not going to work with the president necessarily on immigration reform. Uh, He was making the rounds, the new uh, House Speaker, on Sunday and uh, he was talking about this very particular issue and basically was pushing it off to at least 2017. You know, at the time he's saying, I think it would be uh, basically a ridiculous notion to try to work on an issue like this with a president that we simply can't trust on the issue. This is Paul Ryan speaking, uh, the senator from the uh, the, excuse me, the re- representative and now the Speaker of the House from Wisconsin, the former vice presidential candidate with Mitt Romney. He was on CBS. He was on Face the Nation. And you know, he, he was very out there in what he said about the president. He said he tried to go it alone. He tried to circumvent the legislative process, tried to do it with executive order. And that's basically um, not in the cards. So that was the message from Paul Ryan. So will they end up going head to head? Will Will this basically table this particular issue for a period of time, he says, until 2017. And I guess another question with this is, will Mr. Ryan be able to uh, effectively um, maintain his position as Speaker with this kind of as a, I don't want to say wedge issue, but as a something to propel his leadership and take it to another level? This is all in play and all going on right now in Washington, D.C. We're hoping to get um, immigration reform attorney on here, Eric Sedillo, and then hopefully we're able to connect with him. We're trying uh, right now, but he's certainly been somebody who's been on the front line uh, with this debate. I think we have him on. Do we have him? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Oh, Eric. Good morning. Uh, we just did, good morning. We just did the introduction there all the way around. I think I covered about 22 different points on this issue. I'm sure I missed about 22 more, but it it does look like. Uh, Mr. Ryan, the new speaker and the president, are not only not seeing eye to eye, but they may not see eye to eye on a timeline for this either. Right, right. Well, I, th- I think uh, Mr. Ryan has, has has gotten his marching orders in terms of, of what he is, uh, what's going to happen with respect to Congress. I think he's kind of taken, you know, trying or attempting to take immigration out of the debate with respect to, uh, you know, what we're talking about in the Republican debates, of course, in the Democratic debates. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's going to happen uh, in terms of reform until 2017. I don't think it'll even be addressed. So if it is put off that long, will it? do you think it'll die down on the campaign trail with, with, these, with the candidates in general? Because Donald Trump has made um, a lot of hay with that. I mean, he, he used right. that, and, and, and it seemed to uh, catch the attention of Marco Rubio, who uh, was looking like he had a pretty well nuanced and balanced view, and he he kind of dialed back his his own uh, talk about immigration, watching Trump rise quickly in the polls. Well, there's definitely a difference of opinion with with respect to the rhetoric that Donald Trump is is uh, pressing and and what the Republican Party is actually looking at. 
I think everybody is at odds with respect to their perspective. The Republicans are looking to potentially, I would imagine, reigniting uh, the potential for bringing back Latinos to the, uh, to the issue eventually. Uh, it's not going to happen in this cycle, certainly. Uh, Donald Trump has been kind of uh, uh, the person to throw a, a wrench into that, uh, uh, that whole debate. And I think Paul Ryan is a manifestation, his, his position with respect to we're not going to even make it an issue in 2016 kind of reinforces that. Uh, so until Mr. Trump loses some, uh, you know, stability, if he does in the polls, then, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be a, a difference of opinion between, I think, the uh, the moderate and the uh, far right. Eric, the Republican Party. You, Eric you're, you work with this as an attorney. You're an expert on this. But is it fair to say that, uh, and you talked about, you know, where it's at with the Latino community, but that community is not monolithic here in That's the United right. States. And, and is that something that that the Democrats also need to uh, pay attention to and not take that vote for granted? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think you're seeing a, uh, uh, if, if it wasn't for, you know, some of the things that have, you know, I, I think the whole immigration debate has become a hot button issue intentionally. It did in the past. It was something that, uh, unfortunately, that uh, but I think some, some strategists within the Republican Party a few years back determined that we've got to, to move our base and we've got to excite and, and mm-hmm. ignite uh, our base to make sure that uh, that people are doing or coming out to vote. We're going to start losing presidential elections if we don't do this. So it's been a situation where there is a big difference. You know, uh, there's a lot of Republican. I'm, you know, you're calling me here in Dallas, Texas. Texas is, you know, an incredibly uh, the further south that you go, a lot of the Latinos are very conservative in terms of what's there. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about families and others, you know, when you're talking about, especially what Donald Trump is suggesting, uh, kind of putting us all in the same basket, that's that's very uh, detrimental to the Republican Party. They're going to have a very hard time in bringing us back into the fold, which eventually has to happen, or they'll never win another presidential election. Yeah, you make a great point about that, even in the state where, where you are. A couple of years ago, I was down in the uh, in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and it's it's a, and and what I thought would be maybe the mindset I got turned upside down on oh, me too. It's um it's absolutely. yeah it's uh it it really is um, when you get very close to the border. I mean it changes the dynamic not only just geography, um but right. in the but but in psychologically. As well. So, what is the answer from your standpoint for the people who are here? You know, the, those they say you, you work in the shadows, and and we hear things put forward. Well, you know, you got to get back in line. There, there seems to be a level of reality disconnect at times, with with getting your hands just around that number in the United States. And and is that part of the barrier to true reform? I think what we really need to be looking at is is the benefit that uh, and making the distinction between. You know, closing up our borders and, and keeping potentially people who you know, have nefarious intent coming over mm-hmm. with respect to the folks who are already here. You know, we've got to 11 to 12 million folks who are currently here. That lots of them have been here for years and years and really contributed to society. The way in which we shore up our Social Security reserves, the way in which we shore up uh, the income that we get from those folks is to give them the opportunity to come out of the shadows and contribute more. You know, this DACA program. Uh, deferred action for childhood arrivals has has been a tremendous benefit uh, to a lot of our you know uh, our kids you know our young people who have who benefited from it and have come out of the shadows and contributed, and that's something that we need to to really you know separate and sparse out you know the difference between uh, we're letting too many people in we're fearful mm-hmm. of what's happening at the border and the c- people that are currently here and contributing you know daily, and of course we're watching. Not lo- and nothing happens in a vacuum, Eric. We're watching what happens in Europe with That's refugees, and and they're with open borders, and of course, um, they're having a very different mindset now in many of those countries about that. And that conversation is, let's say, robust uh, right, right now. So again, nothing happens in a vacuum. Eric, uh, attorney on the front line of this uh, debate, expert on immigration reform. We appreciate you joining us this morning. There will be more to cover with this subject, no question about it. Thank you for having me. Eric Sadia, appreciate him being here. More coming up on the morning wake up here early bird hour on your hump day, Wednesday. This is 1320 WILS.